Click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, in today's session we are going to study about the manufacture of Portland cement. Portland cement is one of the most important materials which is used for a construction purpose. Whether we need to build buildings, bridges or any kinds of monuments, we need cement for that. And Portland cement is one of the most important and highly useful cements. So in today's session, we are going to study all the important components and constituents which are present in the Portland cement. <music> Manufacture of Portland cement. The raw materials for the Portland cement are the raw materials required for manufacturing of Portland cement are discussed as follows. The first one is the calcareous material. We will see what exactly calcareous material is and why it is needed in Portland cement. The most important calcareous material is limestone. No cement can be made without limestone. All cements contain limestone. Limestone is one of the most important constituents of cement. And for the first thing, the calcareous material is limestone. It occurs in the form of chalk, metamorphic limestone, sedimentary limestone, carbonite limestone, coral and secondary limestones. There are different kinds of limestones which are available and different types of limestones have different kinds of properties. Of course, all of them are limestones, so they will have similar physical and chemical properties, but they will differ in the physical properties to some extent. The different properties of the limestone depend on the different types of it and that is chalk, metamorphic limestone, sedimentary limestone, carbonite limestone, coral and secondary limestone. So what exactly is the property of limestone? For that we will need to study the property of the cement. There are two important properties of the cement. The first is setting of cement, the second is hardening of cement. That means firstly the cement has to set at a particular position and the second thing is after setting at a particular position the cement has to harden itself in that position. For that the calcareous material is used. The calcareous material especially limestone is very good in absorbing water. So it will absorb water and it will help in setting as well as hardening of the cement. Thus all the cements we use will have one of the most important component and that is limestone. Marl is a calcareous sedimentary deposit is often used with small shells. So to increase the so to increase the volume of the cement or to increase the calcareous content of the cement apart from limestone, the other thing which we can add is marl. And this marl can also be used with the help of small shells in it. The second kind of materials which are present in the cement are my argillaceous materials. The important argillaceous materials available for making Portland cement are clay, slate, shale, ashes, blast furnace slag, cement rocks, etc. Now when we are talking about the setting property of the cement, for the cement to set, there should be some binding agent in it. Certain kind of binding agent should be present in the cement which can bind the entire cement and which can make sure that it will harden in that particular position in that particular shape. And for that the binding we need the argillaceous materials. Argillaceous materials are mainly used for binding the cement. So we have clay, slate, shale, ashes, blast furnace slag. Now blast furnace slag is very important. The slag which is there from blast furnace can be a very good argillaceous material for the cement. Thus we are not wasting the materials for the metallurgy department and we are reusing it properly for the construction works. And finally we have cement rocks for the same. Cement rock itself is used as a raw material because of its richness in argillaceous material and then it may constitute the source of silica and aluminium. Silica and aluminium are used into the cement in the form of silicates that means silica will be used as a silicate and alumina will be used as an aluminate in the cement. Blast furnace slag produced from high grade ore may be used as a source of alumina and silica. Basic slag contains about 50% of CaO. 50, now over here we are using the proportions of it and proportions are extremely important. This CaO has to be 50%, not less, neither more than that. We have 30% of SiO2, 
and remaining 20% contains the alumina and iron oxide. That means the cement itself can also have metals like aluminium, which are aluminates of it, and oxides of iron. That means 50% of lime, that is CaO, 30% of silica, which is SiO2, or any other form of silicates, and remaining 20% can be variations of strong metals, such as either alumina or iron oxides. The next most important material or component of cement is gypsum, which is CaSO4. Now, this gypsum is not added in great quantities, but it has great importance in it. Gypsum is added to regulate the setting of the cement. As I said, the two most important properties are setting and hardening. And first, the cement has to set at a particular position and then only it can harden. If the cement cannot stay at a particular position for binding two components of a construction, it will not harden. And if it will harden at some wrong position, the entire construction will be faulty. And that is the reason why before hardening property of the cement comes the setting property of the cement. And that's the reason why we have CaSO4, which is gypsum, present in the cement in few quantity or very small quantity, but it helps in the setting of the cement. Once the cement is set, later it can harden at that very same position. The next thing we have in the cement is pulverized coal. Pulverized means powdered coal. Coal which is in its powdered form is known as pulverized coal. Pulverized coal is used as a fuel in the manufacture process of the Portland cement. So it may not be directly inside the Portland cement, but it can be used as a fuel for making the Portland cement. All the other components need to mix up in their definite proportions. And for mixing and heating of all those other components, pulverized coal is used. Finally, we have compositions of the raw materials. Now, compositions of the raw materials is extremely important over here. Why? Because if a raw material is exceeding its size or exceeding the percentage of it, then the entire composition will go wrong, which will eventually affect the setting and the hardening property of the cement. Raw materials are mixed in calculated proportions. The average percentage compositions are as follows. So over here, the first component is lime. Lime is one of the most important component. The entire cement is made up of one big component, which is lime. The formula of lime is CaO, calcium oxide. And the percentage is 60 to 67. Now this 60 to 67 percent is the average percent. It's the ideal percentage of it. The minimum percentage of lime should be 50. If the lime content is below 50, that particular cement may not get approved for making any construction. The second most important is silica, which is SiO2. This SiO2 will be in the format of 17 to 25 percent. Moving further, we have alumina. The alumina will be in the form of its oxide Al2O3, which is 3 to 8 percent. Iron oxide, that is Fe2O3, can be 2 to 4 percent. Magnesium oxide, MgO, can be 1 to 5 percent. Alkali oxide. Now, over here, when I'm saying alkali, I mean any alkali metal. Alkali metal are my group 1 metals. That is lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium. But over here, we do not use rubidium, cesium and francium because francium is again radioactive. Rubidium and cesium are highly reactive. So, over here, we do not use those elements over here. So, over here, we have taken Na and K. Both of them are alkali metals but we have taken the oxides of the alkali metals and that is the reason why I have Na2O and K2O which is present from 0.3 percentage to 1.5 percentages. Finally, we have sulfur trioxide over here which is SO3 which is 1 to 3 percentage and this is the entire components with the formulae and the percentages which are required for the Portland cement. So over here in this session, we studied the manufacturing of Portland cement with the help of its important components. The first component was the calcareous material. The second one was the argillaceous material. And finally, we studied all the different components, bifurcated them with their formula and the percentage compositions in the Portland cement. Thank you so much for watching this video. Stay tuned to Ikeda and subscribe to Ikeda.